Just wanted to do a very quick kind of shaky uh, YouTube video here of uh, from my iPhone of the K3NG CW Morris code keyer that I put together. Uh, this is an open source uh, software keyer that is almost endlessly configurable. You can set up um, CLI interfaces on it, optional displays of various dimensions, uh, CW speed controls, uh, up to I think 12 memories, although I've got five installed on, on my uh, build of it. So it takes a little work to try to figure out how to get everything configured and set up, but once you do, it really works well and uh, has a real some really nice features on it. So on, on my particular build, I put buttons, uh, and this is an old box I had uh, for using with uh, a display program, a serial port driven program called LCD Smarty that I put together a number of years back to display information on, uh, from my computer. But I repurposed the box since I've got another one I'm using right now. And uh, it was nice because I had the display installed and the buttons and the LED, one of the LEDs there. So all I had to do was kind of build a new circuit board for the guts and add a few extra buttons and pots and everything is working fine. So anyway, I've got the, uh, the five buttons repurposed here for five uh, transmit memories. I've got a 20 column by four row LCD display backlit. I added a, a speed pot control to adjust the words per minute. Power switch, um, a command button to put the keyer in and out of command mode, which I'll show in a moment. An LED to confirm when you're in command mode and a holdover from the old design. I've got a, a, a control on the side to adjust the contrast of the LCD. Also added a stereo jack for paddle control, uh, paddle connection. So I'm using my Bencher paddles here, but I've also got some uh, Cold Warrior Junior paddles that I can use as well. Got it sitting on an old ancient frequency counter that still works great. Uh, on the back I've got, let's see, I got a couple of jacks. One is for the input uh, for the CW decoder, so I can insert audio from a speaker or transceiver into the uh, box and it'll um, it'll interpret that and display the CW, a great feature. And finally, a key or output jack that uh, is used to connect the keyed output line or the uh, keyer line to the uh, transceiver that you're using. So all in all, it came out really well. It's a little crude looking, but uh, you know, looks home brewing. I like it. So we'll turn it on and it uh, comes up with the um, HI and the uh, the identification, then it blanks out and is awaiting some kind of input or command or operation. So I can um, I can adjust the words per minute, and this is configurable to low and high ranges, but it starts at uh, 13 words per minute and goes all the way up to to uh, 35 35 words per minute. It's quite stable. There's kind of a damping uh, parameter there that stops a little variations in resistance from jittering that around very much. Uh, the command mode is entered by pressing the uh, button on the top and I get confirmation of that. I turn that off and uh, basically we'll set this to something fairly comfortable for me. Let's start about 18 words a minute. So by using the paddles I can transmit some code and it'll key the transmitter but while it's keying it'll also display what you're sending. So very, very nice, uh, real nice feature. Now suppose I wanted to load up that same sequence into one of the memories. I can put it into command mode and I'll send a, a code, basically a P and then the number of the memory I want to program. Uh, and then it'll allow me to do that. So let me enter it now that I'm in command mode. So I sent P1 pro and then the display indicates that now in a mode to program memory one, so let's do that. So, pretty satisfied with that. So I press the button and it plays it back for confirmation before saving it into double EEPROM.
press it again to enter the, uh, to exit rather, the command mode. And now, even though all the other memories are empty, uh, one now will play back, or should play back the stored sequence if I press the first button, and it does. There's a bunch of other commands. You can insert macros. Though it's a little tricky just using the paddle without a CLI, but you can insert macros into stored memories to do all sorts of contest-related functions and other kind of cool tricks. Uh, let's see what else. This dial on the side just adjusts the contrast for varying voltage uh, conditions on the LCD display. And uh, the final feature I want to show is one that's kind of cool. Um, it's the ability of the unit to decode live CW from the speaker of your transceiver. Now there's a server on the internet that also um, transmits a W1AW CW code practice over the internet and as well as some CNN headlines and so forth. The W1AW has a um, from the computer has a tone frequency that kind of matches the center frequency that I have the um, Gritzel detector set up on the on the CW decoder. So we'll use that one. So I'm going to, I've got a little jack here to kind of wrap my audio over. Kind of, sorry about that. Kind of necessary to convert uh, the stereo to a mono. I've got a little box here I've used for some other AV things. All right. So you can see the green LED follows the king, and it does have a little bit of trouble with very fast uh, CW code. It takes a little while to lock in on it and figure it out. There it goes. The code is really pretty good. It's got a very simple interface, and it is able to lock on to the, uh, and track the uh, speed changes. If you deviate too much from the ideal uh, element lengths, this has some difficulty with it. But as you can see, it's doing a really great job of decoding it. So anyway, a great little, great little keyer. I really, really do like it. I've got some very simple uh, Arduino-based keyers, but this one by far is um, the most flexible. That's about it. Thanks. WD9DMP73 signing off.